Hello everybody, it is Nicole from eKiwi, and today we'll be reviewing the new GenCraft squash set that was kindly gifted to me. So let's not waste any time and hop right into the video. On the GenCraft's website, it is originally $60, but is on sale for $27.97, and on Amazon, it is on sale for $27.97 as well. For the packaging, the gouache comes in a cardboard box with the colors listed on the back as well as inside. Inside the set of 50, there are 5 plastic trays with 10 tubes in each tray. The colors that are included are yellow and pink, red and purple, blues and teals, green, and browns and grays. Each tube is non-toxic and individually labeled with the name and code at the top. There are 12 milliliters in each tube, and the paint tubes are sealed, and in order to open them up, you have to turn the cap around to poke a hole with the pointy tip inside. The paint itself is kind of a jelly consistency when it's out of the tube, and I only added a little bit of water to get the paint moving when I started the swatches. Gouache can be watered down like watercolors, but it can also be used straight out of the tube like an acrylic. I found when swatching the colors that some of the colors are more opaque and some are more sheer, and I'll cover a little bit more about this in the pros and cons. The paints dry with a matte finish, and it feels almost chalk-like when you touch it. Now I wanted to test how the gouache would look out of the tube versus watered down, since you can use it both ways. For this example, I used the color red, and straight out of the tube, the color is very opaque and very pigmented. I added a bit of water for every step I went down to change the transparency and to show the range of color. Of course, you can make so many more colors with this, and I didn't do the best job in making a even gradation, but hopefully this quick test was still able to show you that this one color can have a range of different shades. I also wanted to test out if the gouache paint would be opaque after layering it on top of a dried gouache layer. I did two tests for this one with the same colors on the top and bottom, I wanted to use these six rainbow colors to give a kind of a range of both warm and cool tone as well as light and dark colors. So for the top test, I added white straight out of the tube on top of the rainbow colors to see if it would go on opaque or if it would still be sheer. And for the bottom, I did the same except I used the color black. And ultimately, what the test shows is that the white is not really opaque on any of the colors. One layer is pretty sheer, and more layers make it slightly more opaque, but it's not a solid white and you can still see the brush strokes. However, the black is super opaque and covers the color entirely, especially when it's not watered down, and there aren't any visible brush strokes. Now before getting into the pros and cons, I want to note that gouache is definitely not my medium of choice. I worked with it before, but it's definitely a challenging medium for me, and I tend to use it more like watercolors. I also base these pros and cons on my painting style and workflow, but you may find that some of the pros and cons are interchangeable depending on how you like to work. So with that being said, for the pros, there is a large variety of colors included, and I like that the tubes are named and numbered because it makes it easy to identify when you're trying to find the certain color, especially if you're looking on your swatch card. I like that gouache kind of comes with the option of using it either opaquely or watered down, so you kind of are getting two in one. And the gouache definitely dries a lot quicker than watercolors, and for someone that is impatient like me, I do like that aspect, but there are definitely cons to this, which leads me into my cons. So as I just mentioned, drying quickly can also be a con because when I was coloring this piece, I found that the paint dried too quickly and it made the paint appear not as smooth as I would like it to be. This is most visible in the background when I was trying to cover a large area and 
I found that it just kept leaving brush strokes or streakiness that I normally wouldn't get in watercolor. I actually did this piece twice because the first time I tried it where it was more opaque like an acrylic and that didn't really work. So the second time I tried it more watered down like a watercolor and it still didn't provide a smooth finish like I prefer. Another con is that some of the colors are more opaque than others. For example, when I was adding the yellow sparkles on top of the dark teal background, it didn't really appear as opaque as I would like. The tubes are also quite small and there's not really a lot of paint inside. And I found that some tubes were more full of air than others. So when I would try and dispense the paint, it kind of puffed with air and then I deflated my tube. Of course, I don't think that's intentional and it may just be on random ones because some were more full than others. And the last con is that fine liners don't work on top of the gouache because of the matte finish that the gouache leaves after it dries. However, I did find that brush pens work, so if you plan on using brush pens, then it should be fine, but fine liners I found didn't even leave a mark. So overall, if you're someone that does rough sketch painting and likes a painterly look with layering and brush strokes, then this might be something for you to try out. But to be completely honest, I personally did not enjoy using these because the gouache dried too quickly for me and my paint style or my style in general is that I like things to be smooth and blended. However, do keep in mind that I do not use gouache often, so I'm definitely not an expert and maybe I wasn't using it right, but I've used the Windsor & Newton gouache before and it's definitely not the same quality, so I don't recommend this brand to professionals. And I feel like this medium is just really challenging to work with in general and definitely has a learning curve. So it's ultimately up to you if you want to give it a go and see if you can do better than I did. I'll be sure to leave links to some of the gouache YouTube videos that I referenced so you can see if you want to try out gouache in the first place and have an interest in it. But either way, I hope you found this video useful or helpful. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you're notified of when I post a new video. So with that, I want to thank you all so much for joining me today. Keep drawing, keep creating, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!